The hype for the latest great scientific achievement follows other recent great scientific achievements such as the detection of gravity waves and the confirmation of the Higgs boson known as the God particle. These announcements are usually publicized weeks in advance in order to create maximum hype and peak interest in what quickly becomes irrelevant to society as a whole. Big science is constantly trying to stay relevant in today's world of instant entertainment and human intrigue. In the last few years, the human population has become woke, and the idea of these millions of woke humans across the planet becoming science woke is ripe. The problem is that big science, and especially big physics and cosmology, have become irrelevant to the average person. Nothing practical comes out of these recent great scientific achievements, and those who look deeper into the details find deep-rooted problems in theory and models that today have become nothing more than Harry Potter worlds where critical thinkers say, wake me up when you find something real. The donut-shaped shadow revealed in April 2019 might as well have been a real hole and a real donut when it comes to the public and critical thinkers alike. With the same magical and vacuous vocabulary of space-time, singularities, and event horizons, the public has become numb to meaningless words and concepts that have no basis in the physical world. If you think big science and the millions of dollars spent each year on experimental research is in good hands, think again. In the book The Higgs Fake, German physicist and author Dr. Alexander Unziger outlines the suspect procedures and methodologies that particle physicists use to find ghostly signals in order to find the next irrelevant particle in physics. The procedures they use would make any engineer cringe and would get most scientists fired for creating such biased and often nonsensical methods in order to prove what they set out to find. The truth be told, there's never any intention by these physicists to allow for complete failure or for letting the data in the universe dictate their conclusions. Conclusions are predetermined and the methodology is simply tailored to the desired outcome, total success. This phenomenon is known in psychology as confirmation bias, which is defined as the tendency to search for, interpret, favor, and recall information in a way that confirms one's pre-existing beliefs or hypothesis. Scientists who were part of the first ever image of a black hole published their technical paper for all to see, and impart to science journalists and evangelists easy sound bites and clever analogies that seem to piece together a compelling story that at first glance seems to make sense. But take a look under the hood. One quickly finds problems and mathematical complexities, not in the details, but in the broader conclusions and assumptions. And in the case of the black hole image, the entirety of the concept of the black hole as described by the sacred Einstein is in fact sitting on quicksand with only an impression left on the surface where it sank years ago. I have looked through the entirety of the technical paper, read articles of physicists explaining the black hole image to Lehman, and have watched the announcement of this great scientific achievement. What I found was the same patterns all we dissidents see when such great achievements are launched into the world. A progression from a theory rooted in quicksand and sold to the public with fanciful words and analogies that make, among other things, the public very aware of the self-importance these scientists place upon themselves and their supposed findings. When first reading the technical paper, you were struck by the importance scientists place upon the work by the number of authors. In the case of the first image of the black hole, there are 200 authors. This is nothing new. Back in 1995, when the top quark was supposedly verified by particle physicists, the number of authors took up the first four pages of the article. Why so many authors? One word, fame. Each person listed on the paper want to be part of scientific history and reap the rewards in their local scientific communities, whether it be in a laboratory, classroom, or university. To those who are close to the author, the title and prestige is what is important, along with raises and salaries, the bestowing of important titles, and the recognition din dinners and plaques that will come. All overshadowing the fact that almost no one back home will understand or even care about the scientific discovery itself. For those who actually read the original scientific paper, 
things pop out of the page that never get mentioned or discussed in popular press. One small example of this from the technical paper, which is entitled First M87 Event Horizon Telescope Results for Imaging the Central Supermassive Black Hole. The word relativistic appears three times. Yet you will find in the introduction a seemingly innocent sentence, and I quote, Materials move down the approaching jet with a maximum apparent speed of approximately 6c. Relativity states that nothing can go faster than the speed of light. The paper mentions relativistic phenomenon three times. Yet they talk about the jets that the supposed black holes ejects has the apparent speed of six times the speed of light. Something is not right and is not a quibble about some detail. The actual calculations used in creating this image are explained in great detail in the paper. And for someone who is not part of the project, the brain power needed to go through the math would require quite a bit of time. Even though it is still very early, some other scientists in mainstream will go through the math and calculations and will certainly find problems. During the last great scientific achievement of detecting gravity waves, two scientists from Denmark went through the scientific paper examining the math and methodologies and immediately disputed the signals claimed to be waves as simple noise. Instead of investigating the claims and try to figure out if this was true, with Nobel Prize already in hand, the now famous scientists spent two years and numerous trips to explain their works to the critics, never ever thinking that they could be wrong. That is the attitude of big science today. We are right and all critics simply do not understand the calculations and methods of the great discovery. The biggest problem we dissidents have with the concept of a black hole is general relativity. Space-time, infinite points with infinite mass, gravity bending light, all are suspect to most and completely wrong to many of we critical thinkers. The idea of a hole in black holes comes from the infinite singularity where all physics is said to break down. I have news for all of you. Physics doesn't break down at the center of a supposed black hole. Einstein's theory breaks down. First, general relativity is completely mathematical in nature. There is no physicality ever given to space-time. Space-time is a fabric, a rubber sheet, a quantum foam, but in reality, big science has no idea what it is, and they seem not to care about that fact. Yet, space-time is not the only problem. Einstein became the first scientific superstar in 1919, when experiments supposedly showed that starlight was bent by the gravity around the sun. Fast forward to today, and you have scientists like Dr. Edward Dowdy, who is retired from NASA, saying that, in fact, gravity does not bend light. The corona of suns bend light, and outside the corona, light does not bend, even though Einstein says it should. Yet, Einstein's relativity is not the only problem. Critical thinkers who see the problem of space-time having no physicality also realize big science has no physical model for light or gravity. If Einstein's theory was correct and that gravity bent light, big science still has no physical model to explain why this happens. It just is. Going even further, extreme dense objects like black holes are most likely composed of something. Simply saying it is space-time is no longer satisfactory. We must look to new models other than the failed standard model to have any chance of explaining these very dense objects. In the end, we dissidents see this announcement and come back to where we dissidents currently spend most of our time, in creating better physical models for the universe. And most of these new models include physical mechanisms for gravity, light, magnetic fields, electricity, and subatomic structure. We instinctively know that the last three great scientific achievements, including the black hole image, gravity waves, and the Higgs bosons, suffer from a standard model that has no physicality. As Dr. Sabim Hossenfelder, a particle physicist who recently left her job at the Large Hadron Collider, confirms in her subsequent book, Big physics is lost in math, plainly demonstrating the need for new models to replace the standard one. 
Even if we assume that the image of the supposed black hole was correctly obtained, and that the image is a true representation of something, the name of the object is not a black hole. This is a name based on pure mathematics and has no basis in physical reality. After all, the hole is infinite in mass and has no dimensions. We know this is impossible, so the name black hole is out. We do know from studying the center of our own galaxy that these objects are massive, dark, and that we still have no idea what they are made of. Therefore, the current name of these objects are dark, dense objects. Until we all agree on a better model and they become an ether 2 or G2 or plasmoid star or orb or sink or object, the name of these things should be dark, dense objects, not black holes. Until then, we must be content to know that the image of the hole we see is in fact not a black hole, but a very dense, very dark object waiting for its proper name. 100 years from now, the history books will say that in April 2019, the first image of a dark, dense object was constructed from radio telescopes, which we now call, in 2119, X. And that X will certainly not be called a black hole.